time to start. Uh, again, Assalamu alaikum and uh, good afternoon from Malaysia. Uh, thank you for uh, joining. This is our 20th monthly webinar. And Alhamdulillah, we have so far uh, more than 1,600 members from 18 countries. So we, today, uh, Dr. Roxana will be presenting on item analysis. And uh, we will uh, note your questions. Please type your questions in the chat box, but also you will be able to ask questions at the end of uh, uh, this session. Okay, I'll pass over to Dr. Luxana. Assalamu alaikum and very good morning and very good afternoon to everyone. Thanks for uh, joining this webinar uh, on item analysis. Okay. Sorry, sorry for uh, sorry for uh, this interruption. Uh, we are we are the the outcome of the today's session is that after attending these sessions, the participants will be able to explain the concept of item analysis, describe the indices related to item analysis, tabulate and calculate the difficulty and discrimination indices of a given item and decide about the status of the item, whether they should be eliminated or revised before reusing the subsequent test. We are going to do the mathematical analysis most, uh, mostly. We are not going to go into the statistical analysis, which I'm not expert of. Uh, so we are, we are mainly concerned with how, how we can calculate it in our offices and, and for all the tests which we perform without going into this, in the, in the, the details of the statistical analysis. Assessment we all know is uh, is uh, uh, but this is through assessment. What we do is we discover whether the instructional activities in which we engage our students resulted in the intended learning. That is the purpose of the learning. Otherwise, when we have taught the students, we would we should assume that we the students have learned. But normally it doesn't happen like that, and that is why the assessments become very important to see whether our instructional activities have been uh, effective or not. The lecturer utilizes the assessments in order to understand the student's expertise at the learning outcomes. We will we'll come to know that whether the student have gained or are mastered into the learning outcomes for which this examination was conducted, whether it was cognitive, effective, or psychometric. The lecturer knowledge in assessment is also not static. It's, it's, it's progressive, it's rather a complex, dynamic, and an ongoing, ongoing activity. We learn with all examinations, we learn with all assessments, and we try to modify our approach, not only for the teaching learning, but also in preparing our questions and in, in, in uh, setting up the examination paper and all that activity which is related to assessment to cater to the needs of the students. Exam should answer also some questions. The question is which, from which topic are students struggling with and why? This is very important again for the, for the lecturers to know because in that way we can improve our teaching uh, learning activities with the students. We have done this principle of the assessment in our previous session. It's just a reminder that the purpose is of the assessment should be accepted and understood by all the stakeholders. The learning outcomes are clear and serve the stated purpose. The, it should judge the competency of essential knowledge, skills, and attitudes. It should identify the students with difficulties to provide feedback to the students. 
it should evaluate the teaching methods of the different lecturers and uh, the, help them in improving that. It should assess the appropriateness of the content which is being given for, uh, as testing, because sometimes we become over enthusiastic with the content and we go beyond the learning outcomes of the topic. We monitor the effectiveness of the course, whether whatever we plan to, 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 to instill in, into the students, whether we have achieved all those learning outcomes or not, and all those are the aims of the course they have been uh, successfully attained or not. It motivates the student to study by reflection and by the feedback which is provided to them. Uh, it <coughs> measures improvement over, uh, over time of the students, the staff, the, 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 the presentations, uh, everything uh, which is related to assessment and teaching learning will improve if we, if we do the proper analysis and we analyze that analysis as well. Using results ethically and towards the stated purpose is also one, one way of uh, item analysis helps in that as well. Fulfilling the legal demands is also important so that when somebody is in a problem, they will come and ask you why this question was asked, why it is so difficult, why it was, the paper was so easy. So we are, we are in, in a position to defend ourselves to avoid uh, any type of accountability legislation and litigation, et cetera, et cetera, which is, is a common occurrence nowadays with the private uh, institutions. The criteria of the good assessment was uh, identified in the Ottawa uh, cons consensus uh, in 2010. The validity or coherence, the body of evidence is coherent and support the use of assessment results for a particular purpose it's, is the requirement of a good assessment. Reproducibility or, or uh, what we call as a reliability, the result should be, would be same if repeated under certain circumstances over and over again. Equivalence is the same assessment yields equivalent scores or, or decisions when administrated across different institutions or different cultures as well. Feasibility, it is practical, realistic, and, and sensible given the circumstances and context. Sometimes the, the, the assessment method is very good, but we don't have the resources to conduct that assessment. So it's better to do the, the one with which we are comfortable with and which we can do it repeatedly. We cannot keep on changing the assessment types uh, for each group or for over and over again. Acceptability is the stakeholder finds the assessment process and results as credible. Educational effect it should have, it should motivate the students to prepare such that it has the educational benefit. And lastly, it has a catalytic effect when the assessment results and feedback creates and enhances and supports education, so it drives the learning forward. Uh, we start with the item analysis, the introduction of it. Uh, before we do with the item analysis, the item analysis, the whole process is based on the classical test theory. Again, this theory is too statistical, but we are going to just touch and go on this one. It sets the functional relationship between observed or empirical scores. Observed or empirical scores are the scores which are obtained by the student in that specific examination or that test. There are some unabsorbable true scores which are not measurable. Is it the actual skill level of the student in the construct which is being assessed? Uh, so, for example, we are, we are assessing the student in, in uh, how well they understand the cardiac output. Uh, the, the score, the true score, how much they understand actually might not be reflected in the observed score because there are other factors which might be affecting the concentration of the students in the examination, before examination, uh, also because they might not be able to prepare the paper uh, uh, effectively. The errors are all those factors that can affect the empirical scores. It can be emotional factors, the fatigue, the stress. The test itself can be, uh, can be uh, uh, actually uh, affecting the students, the characteristics of the applicator, the environmental condition where the exam is being conducted, whether the place is hot or too cold or, or or the, or the chairs and the tables which are provided are comfortable or not, all that will affect the, the, the performance of the students, including the test instructions which are given to the students, whether they are clear or not. The functional relationship then between the X, D and the E is that X is equal to, that is the empirical score is equal to the true scores plus the errors. Now as the empirical scores we cannot assess, uh, uh, it is considered to be constant, and when it is constant, it means that the observed score will increase 
uh, the observed scores and the error will become inversely proportional. When the observed scores increases in 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 number in 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 uh, in their values, the error e will decrease, and vice versa. So that the state the the, the test becomes more reliable. Item analysis uses statistics plus the expert judgment to evaluate test based on the quality of the individual item, the item sets. For example, you have a question which contains the questions from the from the anatomy, the physiology, pathology, it depends on how many subjects you are, this, the assessment can be integrated. So that will be the item sets. The entire set of items can be, can be evaluated in this way, as well as the relationship of each item to other item and the test as a whole, which can be employed to revise and improve both items and the test later on. It investigates the performance of items considered individually, either in relation to an external criterion, which is suppose it is, it is a test score, or in relation with the remaining items of the test. Item analysis provide information about faulty items as well, and can be can provide information about student misconception and topic that needs additional work. The quality of the test as a whole is assessed by estimating its internal consistency. Internal consistency is actually the measure of the reliability in which we can you can uh, ask the questions uh, the students the same test after some time and see whether the, the, the results produced are similar to the to the previous marks or not. The quality of the individual item is assessed by comparing students' item responses to their total test scores. Index is not determined by the content alone, but also by the students who attempted them. It is very important that we understand that. Sometimes we consider that item is difficult because uh, we have produced a difficult item, a, a very simple item. The student, if they have not learned it, they, they might not be able to, uh, to answer that question. The inf information gathered about difficulty, discrimination, power of items, and objectivity should be, could be used to improve the items further. It is very important that whenever we reuse the, the items, they have undergone a process uh, uh, of... Uh, of investigation in which we really can confirm that the item is good. And believe me, whenever we are waiting this, the, the, the question, it, when you see it next time, you always do want to make some changes into it because you know that you can, you can, you can improve the question all the time. So how item ana analysis helps uh, us in, in, in assessment? It will identify the weak questions, which are irrelevant or ambiguous. It will detect the technical flaws in the question and if the question has been miskeyed. So we can remove them or we can improve them. It can identify the weak destructors, which no one chooses, or which are misleading or ambiguous, or which, are, which can be easily guessed. So we can remove or change them. It, it ensures the merit of assessment, whether, whether the, the questions which are asked are valid, reliable, fair, trustable. The level of question is not too easy, not too difficult. It discriminates high and low performers to, to a certain level. It shows the stakeholders the good practice of the, of the university in, in developing those assessments and in, in bringing out all the learning outcomes which are desired uh, to be assessed in the examination. The purpose of item analysis is to ascertain if the item function at, as it was intended, to conclude if the test is a good standard exam for appropriate difficulty level, to identify the structural or content defects or irrelevant clues which sometimes are given in the examination. We have talked about the, the flawed questions in, in our one of the previous presentations on how to, how to write the PAQs. Establish destructor effectiveness for future use as well. It is very important that destructors which are which we are using are, are not over there as, as the silent uh, players over there, but they have a function over there and the students think about them. It should provide the data to give feedback to the stu to the students, to the to the lecturers and to the stakeholders, all of them. It should differentiate between high achievers and low achievers. It should detect the learning difficulties of the class as a whole first, so that we can revise those topics and we can improve on the, on the presentation of the, of the topics to the students. It should identify the area of weakness of each discipline for remediation. It should help to improve the quality of items by rewording statements, rewriting the structures or modifying the options. It should also help to select best items for the final form of test and item bank. Uh, I think most of the universities 
are developing their own item banks. The, the main purpose of it, the, the, we have a good lot of items from which we can reselect the, the, the questions and we don't have to go ask the, the, the staff members to prepare a certain amount and certain number of questions all the time. For that, the bank, the, the questions which are in the bank should be of high quality. And for that item analysis is very, very helpful. It should increase the staff skill in test, test construction and observe the item characteristics to improve their quality. What should be the sample size? It's a very important question which is asked by the, by the people, how many items are the good items and how many number of uh, 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 students is, is, is the appropriate level for the, for the assessment. The larger the number of items, smaller the standard error, error of the item characteristics. So more the items, merrier it is. Uh, the more we give the question, that means that we are making the, the assessment more reliable. The index of difficulty of the item in the population is measured by the percentage of correct responses. The item total screen uh, score correlation in the population and the other item parameters can be estimated more accurately when the large sample is employed. So by large sample means a, a number of questions which are above 50 or, or something like that. But there is no, no, no hard and fast rule how many questions should be there because people have different, uh, different, uh, different uh, educationists have, are giving different numbers for it. Uh, starting from 30 to up to hundreds of, of the questions. Uh, how many number of students? Again, it is a very, very gray area because the, the, the literature which I went through to, to get the minimum amount of students, I'm sorry, I couldn't get in the real number. Uh, in the, some people recommend that minimum of 300 students or at least 300 to 1,000 or more. At, at educational testing services in which they do the, the, the so, so holistic aptitude test, uh, usually the number of students is 1,000 to 3,000. Uh, but in the classrooms, usually we don't have that many number of students. The, the medical schools and can have a minimum number of 20 or 30 students up to the level of, say, 200 or 300 students maximum, I think so. Uh, if, they are, if they are having more than that number of questions, probably, probably the, the, the university will be having a double intake of the students. But the sample size of 100 is said to be reasonable to, to do the item index, but we will discuss it slightly further as we go along in the presentation. The type of item analysis. The, there are two types of item analysis. What is called as the qualitative item analysis is the process in which the lecturers or the expert carefully proofread the test before it is administered for typo errors grammatical clues and to ensure that the level of reading material is appropriate. It is a very important exercise which should be performed because sometimes we go, we have to, uh, we might end up with the legal issues over there that uh, why these questions were so difficult and why I, this was not the question which I have given for the examination and things like that. So what the practice is that uh, the, when the paper is, paper is finally decided, the paper goes to the head of the department and the head of the department for his or her subject will, will look through the questions and will reconfirm that all the questions were there. They know those, those topics, they are, the top, the, they are from the content and they should put a signature over there to, to verify that they have gone through the questions. This become more like a legal document for the, for the university for, for future purposes. The second is the quantitative item analysis. It is a st statistical technique meant to know about the test items and the item concerned on the basis of three numerical indicators. First is the difficulty index. If test item was easy or difficult for the specific group of student, discrimination index, how well the item discriminated between high and low achievers in the test, and the destructor analysis if all the alternative functions as intended. We start with the item difficulty. The item difficulty of an individual item is the percentage. No, there are two terms. Uh, let me clear this thing. There's one thing called as the item difficulty and the other thing is called as the difficulty index. These are two different things. Item difficulty of an individual item is the percentage ratio of a student sitting for a specific examination who answered the item correctly. It is a relative frequency with which the examinee choose the correct response. 
it has a difficulty level ranging from zero to hundred percent. Item difficulty is the characteristic of the item and the sample that takes the test. For example, an item being difficult for a medical student in year one will be easy for the same student when they go in year two, year three, year four, or year five. It provides common metrics to compare items that may have different domains for same group of examinees. Example, anatomy and physiology being tested in the same paper. Item difficulty, also called as the difficult, uh, the facility value is calculated by number of students with the correct response over the total number of the students who were tested. So if there are 300 students tested for the examination, it will be divided by the total number of the students. And the total, uh, the, all the students will be included in this type of analysis. Multiply by 100 to give you the percentage. It is also equal to an item mean, practically, usually it will, it will lead to the mean uh, value of the item. The higher this percentage means the easier the item and vice versa. This type of item difficulty is dependent upon the group take, taking the test. The student who does not know the subject matter will naturally be not able to answer the item. So means that doesn't mean that item was difficult, that means the student was not well prepared. Now suppose if there are 110 students who had attempted the item and all 110 students got the answer correct, the item difficulty will be 100%. It, is, it doesn't mean that it is 100% difficult, it means 100% easy. So it will be a very easy question with, in which all the students are answering the question correct. If 110 students attempted the item and the 50 students entered the correct answer for it, the item difficulty will be 45.45 as calculated. And if 110 students attempted the item and zero student entered the correct answer, the item difficulty will be 0%, but it will be the very difficult item in which none of the student was able to answer the question. So it is a simple percentage calculation. Item indices, on the other hand, are calculated in a very specific way and have a specific method. You have to arrange the scored marks in order from highest to lowest. So suppose there are 120 students and the students have, have different variables. Usually the, the result is which is projected is according to the their um, uh, metric number, so-called their, 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 their class number or, or, the, or their admission number. But now we have to arrange these marks according to the number of the, of the marks which the student has obtained. It can be automatically done if you have put those numbers in the say SPSS or, or in the, uh, what is that called as, um, uh, yeah, it's just a statistical, we yeah. have, um, sorry, forgot the name. Identify the higher group, then you have to identify the higher group NH and the lower group NL separately. NH is the number of students in higher 27% of the class, and at least the number of students in the lower 27% of the class. So the whole class, from the whole class, we have arranged those marks. So we'll take the 27% of the higher group and 27% of the lower group to, to, to be included in this analysis. The remaining 46% of the middle students are not included in this analysis. Suppose again, the class size is 110 and 27% of the 110 is equal to 30. So practically we are going to select 29.7, so you have to round it to, to, to 30. So for this 110 students, the lowest scoring 30 students and the highest scoring 30 students will be included for the assessment and for the analysis. And I'm going to use the same figure for all my later part of the presentation. 30 students. So NH is equal to 13 and, and L, the higher group and the lower group. The higher group has 30 students and the lower group has 30 students. Comparing the upper and the lower group promotes stability by maximizing the differences between the two groups. Why we are using 27% practically, they say that if you use the 27, 27, then in the middle, for example, 46% of the students are left behind. So these two groups are too far apart to give you a good statistics about how the good students and, and, the, and the not so good students are performing. Uh, this is not the, on the, on the only percentage which can be used. You can use the 33% or you can use the 25% as well for this purpose. Uh, if the student number is very less than the people, I also recommend that you can use the 50-50 uh, distribution as well. 
the difficulty index is calculation is calculated as a ratio or percentage of the NH and the L, and L group of students who answered the item correctly. Index of which is also called as the index of item difficulty or DIF is difficulty of index, which is also called as the p value. So whenever you see the p value, it is not, not the whole class difficulty which has been calculated, it is the difficulty of the upper and the lower group is calculated. So RH is the upper group plus RL is the lower group divided by the total number of the students in, in, in these two groups, which is NH and NL. It is equal to zero to one. If it is in the form of ratio, if you multiply it by 100, it will become the percentage. So RH is the number of students in NH with the correct response. RL is the number of students in the NL with the correct response. And P is the total number of students in the NH and NL who attempted the item. The P value is the difficulty index expressed in the ratio of 0 to 1. It is used for test analysis recommended average level of difficulty for four option SBAs, which is normally practiced ranges between 31 to 60 percent. But these values again differ with, with different uh, um, uh, uh, analysts. They, they, they will give you these values slightly different. So uh, there are some recommendations which are, which are widely accepted. We'll talk about them in, in a minute. P-value is the estimate of a, a difficulty index which will be obtained if percentage of the whole class is to be determined. These estimates are quite satisfactory for large class sizes as higher and lower group have large number of students. However, selection of 27% for each group makes best compromise in this value will maximize difference in normal distribution while providing enough cases for analysis. For small class sizes, this estimate can be fairly inaccurate and it is preferred to calculate the difficulty index for the whole class. It should not be applied if the total number of the student is very small, a minimum of 20 students is proposed as a pragmatic criterion. This is the recommendation by the WHO in, their, in the booklet on the educational handbook for health professionals. Uh, that is their recommendation. But technically speaking, I think minimum 20 is, is still very low number. Attempt difficulty has a powerful effect on both the variability of test scores and the precision with which the test scores discriminate among the group of students. When all the item, test items have very low difficulty index, the majority of the test scores will be very low. As e so as even the higher scorer will not be able to do the item correct. And when all the items have a very high difficulty index, most test scores will be extremely high as both the higher and the lower scorers will be able to do the item correct. So these questions will not be able to discriminate between the students. We'll discuss how later on. Thus, extreme p-value directly restricts the variability of the test scores, and it is applicable only to items scored dichotomously, that is, in which you give the answer as yes or no, uh, true or false, uh, one or you give the marks one and zero, where the marks become very variable, the difficulty index cannot be calculated. So practically, difficulty and discrimination indexes are used for those type of questions in which the, the marks are fixed a value of one and zero, like that. Uh, objective type of question. The minimum and the maximum score. Again, it is a bit tricky. So uh, let's concentrate on this one. Too easy or too difficult item for a group will make it hard to identify reliable inter-individual differences. The optimal difficulty depends on the number of test item and the chance score. What is chance score? That is important to understand. For an item, for correct response of an item, the perfect score will be one mark. A student who have answered it correctly and knows the topic as well will get the one mark. But for a four alternative MCQs, for example, the mean chance score is 0 0.25. The students are now guessing the, the, the exam because they are, there is no negative marking for guessing. The student will guess and for four options, which includes the correct option as well, the chances are that that uh, one fourth of the of the time they will be correct, so it will be 0 0.25 marks they will be getting. The optimal difficulty for such an item would be halfway between the perfect score and the mean chance score. So perfect score is one and the mean chance score is 0 0.25. To add both this value, it will be 1.25. And you get, if you get the mean of it, the, the middle value will be 0 0.625. 
if the if the number of options increases or decreases the, uh, the mean number of options say becomes 5 so the mean chance score will become 0 0.20 not 0 0.25 and if there are three options so the means mean chance score will be 0 0.33 because it will be divided in the three they have the students have uh, 33 percent chance that they are going to pick up the correct correct answer for the test, uh, for a test item which is composed of five options, I will choose, for example, there are 40 items. So the maximum perfect score of the test will be 40. And the mean chance score will be one fifth of 40 because for five options, there the student will be, will be guessing. So one fifth of 40 will be eight marks. The student can get the minimum eight marks by guess, guessing through those, uh, through the test, even if they don't know the answer of single one of them. So the optimal difficulty will be 40 plus 8 is equal to 48 divided by 2 is equal to 24. That is how you can calculate how, how, how what is the mid-level of the, of the difficulty which should be produced for the students. <coughs> the general guidance, guidelines for the users of difficulty index are, this is the recommendation which came from, from Abel and Frisbee long, long time ago in 1986. Item is said to be very difficult if it has a difficulty index of 0 to 0 0.2. 0.21 to 0 0.4 is difficult. 0 0.41 to, you say it's a, it's a division between the 20, 20, 20. 0 0.41 to 0 0.60 is average. 60 to 80 is easy. And 81 to 100 is very easy. And they have given the actions, uh, they have recommended the actions what to do with the, those type of questions. For example, if it is it is very difficult, so check the key response, the, the, whether the key has been entered correctly, review for the confusing language. If there is a language problem with the question or the content needs to be instruction, the student have not learned it. So you have to ask the, to, to re-emphasize that topic to the students later on. Similarly, they have the, given the actions for, for all, the, all the different difficulty indices. The items with moderate index of difficulty 0 0.41 to 0 0.60 is recommended as it shows more reliable scores. Item with indices of 30 to 70 is still considered as acceptable. Any item with, which have an index below 30 is considered as very difficult and any item with a uh, difficulty of 70 and above is, is, is considered as again very easy question. <coughs> Then comes the item discrimination. Item discrimination is the degree to which an item discriminates between students of high and low achievement. Again, we have the same old formula about here as well. Items with good, good discrimination improve the assessment's, uh, assessment's ability to discriminate between participants of different ability levels. So you can identify those students who are good and those students who are weak, and you can do some remedial actions with the weak students, and you can prepare the, the students who have good uh, good marks to, to appear for the first, for example, distinction by award, some award, or something like that. So that is how the students are selected for, for different purposes. Item discrimination if low uh, is low, lower if p-value is low due to very hard or very easy items. Difficulty, difficult items tend to discriminate between those who know and those who don't know the answer. Items with low or negative discrimination lowers the reliability of the assessment or threatens the validity of the results. Negative discrimination especially is very, very important. Negative discrimination means that the good students are not able to answer the item correctly. High performers are more likely to answer good items correctly and low performers are more likely to answer incorrectly. That is, that is the basic understanding of the, of the teachers. That, that is how the results are going to come about. Discrimination DI is calculated by comparing the number of students in the higher group RH, which we have already calculated, who got the item right, with the number of students in the lower group RL who got it right. Remember in the difficulty index, we added both the RH and the RL students and then divided it with the number of students in both the groups. But in, in calculating the difficulty index, we subtract the, the number of students from RH to RL, the difference between the two groups, and the total number of R and H or 
and L. Not the not because we are going to discriminate the students, so the half of the group is taken either the NH or LH, which is which is which is same. So either the thirty percent, which will be divided for 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 this uh, presentation, it will be thirty students. We are we are calculating because this is the number of students in the NH group. So. Uh, another way of doing it, another method is that you double the score in 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 the in the in the RH and RL group, uh, make it double, but then the total number of NH and NL is is, is being being taken. So the, instead of half of the T, the, the value of the T that is all, both um, both the groups, 60 students is being estimated. The discrimination index ranges from minus zero, uh, minus one to plus one. Minus one is the negative discrimination when students with RL group are scoring better than RH group on an item. For example, suppose again the class size is 110 and 27 percent of the class is 30. So NH and LH is 30. All 30 students in the NH group got the answer correct, while none of the 30 students in the NL group got the answer correct. Hence, the difficulty index will be 30 minus 0 over 30 is equal to 30 by 30 is equal to 1, which is the best which, which, which you can get. But this is this should not be our plan to get this type of difficulty. That means we are picking, making the paper only for the good students. So technically speaking, if the value is getting this way, that your result is going to be very bad for the, for the students. But uh, generally, it is considered as the best. This, this is very good if you are doing the norm reference uh, assessment in which you are you are discriminating the stu one student from another, but if you are uh, not doing that and you are you are working on a group of the of the class, then the the value should be uh, not one; it should be less than that. Twenty students, suppose in the NH group, got the answer correct, while ten students in the NL group got it correct. So the difficulty index will be twenty minus ten will be ten, and over divided by thirty is equal to zero point three three, which is which is quite reasonable. Now, 20 students in the NH group got the answer correct, while 26 students in the NL group got the answer correct. Now, the NL students are doing it more. So, if we subtract 20 from 26, the difference will be minus 6 over 30. So, 0 0.02 0 .2 students are, uh, are doing more uh, better than the, than the good students. But what this 0 0.02 means actually, that is important to understand. Suppose for this group of 110 students with NL and N of 30, difficulty index comes 0 0.19. What does 0 0.19 actually mean? You, you will see the statistics and you will be surprised. There will be 0 0.19 and 0 0.08 and 0 0.34 and all, all those figures will come up. If you know the, the, the number of the higher and lower group, divide, multiply this uh, difficulty index into the number of students and you will know how many more students are answering that question, right or wrong. Right, okay. So 0 0.19 multiplied by 30 is equal to 5.7 is equal to six students. So more, six more students from the NH group are answering the question uh, correct than compared to the, and that is how you discriminate between the groups. If DI is 33, so 33 multiplied by 30 is 9.9 .9 or 10 students more in the NH group got the answer correct than compared to the NL students. And if BI is minus 0.09, so you divide, multiply the minus 0.09 with 30, so the answer will be minus 2.7. So there are three students more in the L NL group, which is the low students group, the low level group students who got the item correct when compared to, to the NH students. The general guidelines for the, user, for the usage of discrimination index are uh, again given by the Abel and uh, Frisbee in 1986. Uh, the negative discrimination means that the, the, the the lower group students are, are performing better than the higher group students. So there is a suggestion that these questions should be rejected or more RL are doing is, is correct than our students. Uh, but my suggestion will be that you should also look for the, for the answer key, whether the key has been entered wrongly over there or not. 
0 to 0 0.19 is the poor item, it should be rejected or improved. 0 0.2 to 2.9 will, will be the marginal accepted subject to improvement. 3 to 3.9, uh, 0.3 to 0 0.39, 0 0.4 to 0 0.39 is reasonably good item and should more, more often uh, should be used. Above 0 0.40, very good items, but very good items mean it has a very high discrimination. And again, we are catering for the for the for the higher group students. Again, this this type of levels are good for the uh, norm reference students than the criterion reference students. But for the criterion reference students, then we have the passing mark, for example, 50%. And if the students gain 50% marks, then this level will be a bit too high for the for those students. High discrimination of the item indicates students with high score did the item correct, whereas students with low test scores got it incorrect. Higher the difficulty, lower the discrimination. They have to keep on popping again and again. What is the process of item analysis? For each item, count and record the number of students in the higher and the lower group with correct options. For each item, count and record the number of students in the lower 27 or 30 and those in, in the, with the correct answer uh, in RL group. Now you have to put those, those students in number, the 30 students, and see what they scored in each item. Add the marks 1010101 for all the 30. Now you have discriminated between the two groups and you, you will see that, for example, in this one, I have not put all the 30 over there. That will make the slide very crowded. Uh, the higher group, for example, have the item one was done correct by 30 students and the lower group, 24 students. Similarly, item two, three, four, and five. Calculate the difficulty index p-value of all the items in the test and tabulate as follows. Index of difficulty p-value R is RL over total number of students multiplied by 100. Now, this is the value which comes over here. 30, 24, the total correct answer is 54, and the difficulty index of p-value is 0 0.09. How we got it? 30 plus 24 is 54, divided by 60 is equal to 0 0.9. It's a simple mathematics which we are using. If you want to multiply it by, multiply it by 100, then it is the 90%. So the item is very easy. Interrupt the p-value of each item in, rela in relation to the standard values. For example, we see over here the interpretation very easy. So for very easy, the interpretation is it should be more than 0 0.81 to 100. We should avoid this type of questions or content assessed in formative assessment. If you think that the content is very important and the student should know it, that item, that, that content can be assessed in the formative assessment, for example. So if you see that the first item was very easy, the second was average, third was difficult, fourth and fifth were average. In criterion reference tested, the goal is not to make the test hard, moderate, or easy in difficulty, but to translate the test specification into the relevant test task. But, but we want to see the, whether the students have achieved the learning outcomes or not, not to make the test very difficult so that the students should fail in the examination. To calculate the discrimination index by comparing the number of students again, the high and the low group, discrimination index is again calculated by the same formula. Now in the higher group, the, the, in the item one, there were 30 students, the same number of students we are talking. In the, in the first one, we have added them. Now we are going to subtract them. So 30 minus 24 is 0, 06. So the discrimination index is calculated by this formula. Uh, and it comes out as, as to be 0 0.02. I'm calculating over here this one because this is very important, which is the in higher group, none of the student was able to do the item correct. In the lower group, all the students did it correct. So the RH minus RL is minus 30. And the difficulty, um, the discrimination index of this question is minus 1, which is the maximum discrimination index uh, in minus. So all the all the, the lower level students were performing the question correctly, while all the upper group students were uh, not able to do this question. So something wrong somewhere over there. Interpret the DI of each item in relation to the standard values of discrimination index. Again, minus one negative means that there is a negative discrimination. Discrimination, the student, again, the recommendation is that reject this question. 
uh, because uh, the, the good students are not performing well, but again, you have to look for the key to see whether the, the, the students are really not performing that well. The more difficult or easy the item, the lower its discriminating power, but much uh, such items offer adequate and representative sampling of the course content and objective. So practically, we are not going to throw away all the questions which are more difficult or more easy. Uh, we have to interpret how many number of questions we are using which are difficult, how many are easy, and how many are, are very difficult or moderate in, in, in number. The purpose of the item in relation to the total test will influence the mag magnitude of its discriminating power. Now, but once we have done the comparison of the difficulty, and when, once we have calculated the difficulty index and the discrimination index, we will compare these two indices of the questions. Remember, we have already calculated the difficulty and discrimination of index of those five items which we have selected. Now you compare the 0 0.9 value with 0 0.2 value or 0 0.6 with the zero value and see whether we should be keeping this question or we should be rejecting this question. Item one is easy with marginal discrimination, so it should, which is subject to improvement and you can keep this question. Say item two with the, with the difficulty of zero six, but the, it has no discrimination. Check for content if some important information is missing and that is why the students uh, um, are not in uh, the students both in the upper group and the lower group because discrimination is zero. So both in the upper group and lower group, some students are confused about this item. So uh, check for the for some missing item over there, which for which the good students were not able to perform better. Item three, moderate difficulty, very good discrimination. It is a good item. Four four. Uh, item four, difficulty, very high discrimination. Relates with uh, relate with the level of students when they when the discrimination is very high again, you should assess that what is the level of the, your students and for whom you are you are doing this assessment. Uh, discrimination level of one technically means that we are segregating the the high performers from the from the from the lower performance to, to the extreme extent. This is this is good for the again for the um, what criterion reference. Norm reference, norm reference uh, assessment. I'm sorry. Okay, time four is the average difficulty. Uh, item five is the average difficulty. Negative discrimination. We have to check the key. Yeah, uh, this is an overview of uh, of all that has been said uh, so far. Uh, I I want to say thank you to Prof. Rogaya Jha for actually she. She passed away a few years ago. She, she, she taught us when, when she taught us the item discrimination, she showed us this, uh, this uh, which is very, very practical and it's very good. Now we come to the third one, which is the destructor analysis. What is destructor analysis? Destructors are based on students' misconception is considered to be good when it attracts more students from the group of low achievers and the group of high achievers. Students' performance depends upon how the destructors are designed, leading to a great impact on the total test score. The aim of the destructor analysis is to identify the functioning and non-functioning destructors. What are functioning and non-functioning destructors? Producing plausible destructors which are functional. These are plausible destructors being selected by equal to or more than 5% of the student is considered important for the quality SP items and their reliability. Uh, a non-functioning destructor is defined as an option with either a, a response frequency of less than five or a positive discriminating power. Uh, we are we are going for the for the the, the response uh, uh, efficiency of the response for, for this one. Uh, Non-functional destructors does, does not help in measuring the educational outcome, adds nothing to the item or test, and has negative impact on the learner if we have too many of the non-functional destructors. The destructor efficiency for any item ranges from 0 to 100 and is determined on the basis of number of non-functional destructors in an item. For an item with the, for a question, uh, item with the four options. If there is no non-functional destructors, means the, the non-functional the, the destructor has been has been selected by number of few number of uh, there's no non-functional dis destructor mean the items uh, uh, the, the destructors are 100 percent efficient if there is one non-functional dis destructor the destructor efficiency is 66.3 
If there are two, if it is 33.3, and if there are three non-functional destructors, none of the destructor has been selected by the students with the, with the destructor efficiency is zero. DE can be evaluated by response frequency using difficulty index formula, destructor discrimination using the discrimination index formula, or by the expert judgment of the, of the, the experts. Uh, again, uh, the, for uh, calculating the response frequency, the same formula is used of selecting the 30 up and the 30 lower, uh, the higher and the lower performance students. Identify the number of responses for each destructor in both the groups. So this is how it is being done. For example, this is the upper group, uh, 10 items, all 30 are doing. This is the, with the, the one with the asterisks are the correct answer. So you will see that in the, in the for example, item one, none of the destructor were used by the upper group, but the B destructor was used by six students over there. Similarly, you tabulate all those number of the students, the items uh, and, the, and the number of uh, students using each destructor. I marked those because in, in these ones, there are some values. For example, in the upper group, all the 30, person, 30 students answered this question for the question five, but zero student was able to do answer the, the correct, uh, answer it correctly in the lower group. And equal number of students have selected the, the destructors 10, 10, and 10. So this is, this is, these destructors are pretty good uh, for, the, for, for this item. Uh, but in the uh, in the second one again, none of them was uh, both both of them did 100% perfectly, so no destructor were used over there. The functional destructor is equal to uh, uh, the students more than 5% of 60 will be at least three students should be selecting these destructors. Non-functional destructor again should be selected by at least three students. Calculate the number of times each destructor is selected by the students to determine its effectiveness. Then identify those which are not performing well. The destructor efficiency is, 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 uh, is calculated by using the same formula of the difficulty index. And you will find that this is the percentage of each destructor which has been used. So from this, you can calculate how many, how many destructors were functional, how many were non-functional. The number of item non-functional words, for example, over there is a seven. With, uh, with zero non-functional destructor will be seven. With one uh, non-functional will be this number. So this, this is all given in this chart over here. How to do for the, the destructor analysis the efficiency test by discrimination, the destructor discrimination index. Again, the same formula is used, uh, DE, RL, RH minus RL of T, but we are not discriminating in the students over here. We are trying to find out the students uh, in the upper group or the lower group for selecting this one. Again, the same options are given over there. You will see that all those which have the negative discrimination over here means that the students in the lower group are now doing it correctly. And that is what we want, that the low uh, uh, group students should be selecting more of the destructors. The students, for example, 0 0.26 who is selecting is, is practically the higher group students is selecting more of this destructor. So you have to find out why these students are selecting this destructor because uh, uh, we don't expect the higher group students to be distracted by the destructors. The interpretation is done that if the value is less than zero, uh, negative discrimination indicates that the RL group are selecting the destructor as possible. So these are the good items. If it is more than zero, so more RS group is selecting it, it is confusing and should be revised. If it is the, the number of the, the interpretation is zero, both RH and RL group are not selecting or equally selecting in small numbers then it is non-functional and should be discarded. And if it is equal to zero, and but the higher number of students in both groups are selecting, it is plausible, but needs revision. So this is how you interpret this, uh, this data of the destructor uh, efficiency by discrimination index calculation. D by the expert judgment, compile relative NH and NLF responses for each item and identify miscode items, overlapping items, content beyond scope items, 
check the correctness of any item in which the single destructor is chosen more often than other options, including the answer, and especially if destructor has positive discrimination. It's very important that we, we look through the question and see what happens over here. Students are overthinking and important information is missing in, 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 in item writing. That is why the students in the upper group are confused. Or, uh, and the next is to examine the number of NL students selecting each destructor. The pattern of incorrect responses can reveal misky, the lack of knowledge, misunderstanding, and ambiguity or guessing by the students. And in that way, you can improve, we can improve on our lectures, give the feedback to the students and on, on their performance, and uh, uh, to remove all those uh, um, misunderstandings or the misconceptions the students have. Students selecting between only one to two destructors indicates that the other destructors are ineffective and they will be chosen by guessing only. So if, you, if, if they, are they are using only one and two destructors and the other, uh, others are, are, are not effective, that means the students are very good in guessing. They can easily guess which one is the correct one. Be mindful when there are two or more destructors not selected by anyone. An ineffective destructor leads to question of fairness. Destructors not chosen by any student should be revised or eliminated. Look for destructors which are overly complex, vaguely worded, or contains obviously wrong created content. Now, this is a very important uh, issue over here. Sometimes when the examiners, when the question developers don't find uh, 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 appropriate destructor, they will create a situation which is not in the books, which is not uh, a, a true, uh, is a true uh, statement, which is which is not even relevant. But the, that will confuse the good students. Actually, they probably they have not read it or they have misinterpreted it or they are not aware of it. So this type of uh, uh, things will will affect the good students more than the bad students because. The good students always overthink uh, while 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 uh, selecting the appropriate responses. Destructors should not be mini tests nor waste of effort. Determine whether NS group students are drawn to an incorrect answer due to ambiguous or un unclear destructor, or a topic deserves more attention during the instruction. Item flaws leading to failure of students to select correct answer both in higher and the lower group. Not a learning outcome not part of the content and it is being put in the examination. It is an ambiguous item. The correct answer is not in the options. More than one correct answer or in a single correct answer is, is, is the cause of it. It contains grammatical errors, which is confusing the students in both the groups. Double negatives in options confusing the students. Students have not learned or understood the topic. It was either the presentation of of the teacher was not good, or students were not able to understand that properly. The key uh, miskeyed items, wrong IP entered in, in master copy, uh, that can be the reason. So when this, this leads us that after the, the item analysis, the items are reviewed. And for the review of the items, all the subject experts need to give their input. It is a it is a tedious exercise. It has to be done, but this is the exercise which actually will make us uh, decide which items to be kept and which items to be rejected. Remember, rejecting the item is is not a good idea in a way that because student the the, the teachers spend a lot of time in developing the items, and if we can review them and we can uh, revive them and make them survive, that will be better than to to ask the the, the, the staff members who are already overstretched to develop new questions. Although less susceptible to guessing, SBAs require a good number of plausible destructors to achieve reliability. Continuing faculty development to construct quality SBA with plausible destructors requires skill and experience, and that should be developed in the staff. PBL case scenarios as problems can be used with destructors focused on areas where students have misconceptions. Staff should actively participate in vetting of examination question and evaluation of item analysis data collected. Medical education should provide feedback to the concerned staff to upgrade their items. Expertise of medical education should be availed for analysis of items to improve their quality. 
If the majority of students miss an item, check for its accuracy and find out if the content was covered during academic sessions. Rewrite or eliminate the items which, which correlate or discriminate less than 0.15 with total test scores. Report total test reliability first and remove each item from the test and calculate the test reliability excluding that item in which in which we, we will understand that how the, the reliability improves when they when we remove the bad questions from the from the from the good ones. Uh, when the difficulty index is very small, indicating the difficult question, it may be that the test item is not taught well or it's difficult for the student to grasp. It also indicates that the topic test is, is inappropriate for that level of the student. Discrimination index should be positive for correct answers. Develop a question bank with items which are valid and reliable in the requirement to avoid last minute panics. Subjective judgment of item difficulty by item writers and the waiting committee may allow 40 items to be selected in the item bank. This is the observation of the Mitra et al. in 2009. Because sometimes in the in the waiting group or committee or in the uh, review group, there are people who are powerful and they will they will have their say and whatever they say, nobody can challenge it. That can lead to a, a question bank which is which contains flawed questions. Now we the, let me show you some uh, some practical examples of which we went through uh, over the years and we have learned from our mistakes in that one. Issues with the master keys. Uh, student answer sheet is also used as a master key normally over here in Malaysia. So we have the same uh, the template in which we have to write that it is a master key and what examination we are using it for. When a number of examination is being taking place, we can give the incomplete or wrong information in, in those keys. But mixing up of the master sheet can take place with, when there is a wrong labeling. When, for example, the labeling is, is PBM for PM. What is PBM is psychological and behavioral medicine paper, but it has become PM, which is the pediatric and the adolescent medicine uh, paper. Because PBM and PAM can be easily confused, so the 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 master key has gone in the in the wrong in, in the wrong file of the of the answer sheets, and that has resulted in in a, in a questions in the in the result which was very very um, misinterpreted. Now. For example, in this sheet, it is written only year three medicine. Now, no other information is pro provided. That means that if you look at this sheet now, you wouldn't know which year, which group, which, uh, which semester examination, which type of examination. You will get no information about when, when this, this uh, master sheet was used. OMR reports, you have to look very carefully and assess whether the BAQs uh, where the overall performance was of the students. Uh, for example, in these 10, 10 items, you will see I, I marked those which are the correct answers over there. So uh, the correct and the incorrect student number in few items were very, very close. So that means that these, these items were uh, quite confusing for the, for the students. So, uh, so you have to look through those items because if the number of incorrects are so high, it means a high number of class students will be not able to pass this examination. And the aim of the, of the assessment is not to fail the students. It is to assess the, the, the actual power of the students in, in, their, in their learning. The wrong answer key makes the result in unre unreliable. Over here, I, I marked three areas. This, this is from the when we, we were using the true false item. You will see that in the in question number three, none of the, none of the circle was marked. So, when the circle is not marked, it, it will be it will be taken as wrong answer for both. If even even the correct answer is given, it will be marked as wrong answer. The in question number four, the the circle is not filled up, so the optical reader will not read it. And in the in the in the fifth one, there was no marking over there, but the person knew the marking, but he has used the pen over there to mark it over there. Again, the optical reader will not read. Did they have a specific pencils used? to mark this sheet. So if, if you are filling it like that and the filling goes out of the box as well in a hurry, the optical reader will reject that, that item. So you will see that how, how, it, how it affects the results over here. This is again a true false item test. So you will see that 
in, in, in the upper row, they are given the two false, false, true, true, true. This is, this is the master sheet, which is being read over there. And there are gaps in this master sheet where, there are, where, where you will see the dash is present over there. And you will see the notepad part of it. So if you translate in, into, the, into the result of the students, you will see that these gaps are visible over there in, in, in this uh, the, the student's result. Dash T, dash T, dash, dash, dash T, dash, dash, dash means the students are getting zero marks over there. So there was none of the students who get the correct answer over there. And that will greatly vary the, the result of the students and the reliability of the, of the, of the test will go down. Again, if the wrong key has been entered, for example, over there, the key was that the, the question five and six, the D was the correct answer and for the six C was the correct answer. But in the examination, it appeared that the key has entered the C to be correct answer and D to be the wrong answer. And you will see the difference that most of the students were able to do that at and correct, but most of them students then were not given marks for that one because uh, the, the key was entered wrong. The test item assembly in the in the test paper is very important for do, to do the item and analysis. For example, when we we give this uh, uh, table of specification, for example, this is for the CVS examination for the final professional, and you have calculated anatomy, physiology, biochemistry, pathology, microbiology, pharmacology, community medicine questions. The questions will appear in the same way in the examination and the number of questions have been identified. So we, you, you will know that the first uh, four questions will be from, from anatomy and the second 10 question will be physiology. And there will be one question from physiology and there will be four questions from pathology. So you can, you can uh, find the difficulty in discrimination in that subject wise and you can inform the subject experts how this can be used so in order to type uh, in order of types of multiple type of items are used in order of difficulty of items if integrated in order of discipline to assess the problems related to disciplines level of items students difficulties in the discipline discrimination power of items etc etc all can be determined if you put the question in the right order and they are analyzed uh, individually by 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 the the, the OMR report which comes out will have all the questions, uh, uh, difficulty discrimination index calculated. It is us which we have to do this, this further segregation of the question and calculating it, uh, the effectiveness of the, of, the, of the item. For example, this is the item analysis, overall difficulty and discrimination index has been calculated. There are the, the red areas where the overall disc, the negative discrimination is doesn't look good uh, in, in the in the results. And if the, if you project these results with external examiners, they will always questions question it that they they were questions with the negative discrimination. The discipline difficulty index has been calculated, compared, calculated and compared. So, for example, in the upper part, this was the surgery 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 based question. In the first row, the number three one. The, the uh, MCQs, orthopedic surgery of Pops Gynae and the, and the emergency medicine and anesthesia was there. And in the, in the second one is the orthopedic surgery, the discrimination index. So this type of charts can be created and the subject experts or the, or the different disciplines can be, in, can be informed about the performance of the questions in the examination. Again, this is not, not enough because after you know that they, 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 the performance of their items were not, uh, was en not enough, you have to identify which items were not enough. So for that one, again, a, a meeting is held, a group is created in which most of the head of the departments, they participate and they will go through those, those each question separately and we, they will see that whether the, the difficulty and the discrimination index was, of, uh, was good or not. Um, the R is for right answer, W is for wrong answer, D is when uh, there is there is a uh, when the question is given both. Sometimes they take both uh, over there, and uh, the difficulty and the discrimination uh, index is there. So each question is assessed separately to to find out whether the, the question difficulty discrimination index. You are still happy with that, or you can change one or more options over there and make it a good question. Uh, similarly, this is one example. Where the, the, for example, in the, in the question, you will see that the difficulty index was 95.75, but still it was giving a negative discrimination 
or 0 0.08. So you have to find out why, why one student is confused about this. Um, what was the reason? Because this is the higher, higher uh, uh, group student who is uh, not performing well. I think that is the end of it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam. Thank you so much for such a nice presentation. Okay, stop sharing. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you, Madam. Assalamualaikum. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, Dr. Osana, would you take a question? Yes, sure, sure, sure. sure, sure. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I was wondering if uh, if the idea of moderation has got anything to do with uh, 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 idea of moderation? Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, I was asking if the idea of moderation has got anything to do with the post hoc analysis, or is it a separate thing altogether? Uh, mod moderation is a different thing. Moderation is, is uh, I, I don't know. What we do in moderation is that we will look at the result of the students. And the students who are at the real borderline, or the students who are who are just touching the distinction values, we'll we'll look at their papers and we'll see whether we can moderate uh, and, and upgrade their results or not. So it, it is the the whole committee decision over there, the exam committee and the external examiners. They all participate into that, and they will they will decide. Uh, it has nothing to do with the item analysis and what to do with that. Because the, once the result is there, the result is there. Even, Even if we moderate the students, we will say that the, after moderation, the result was upgraded, but still the, the result of the student will remain the same. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, I missed the last yeah, part. Uh, Prof. Uh, uh, Asim, just, just a minute. There is another question. Somebody asking about to explain the chance concept. Okay, uh, going back to the to the questions, the chance concept is that uh, if the student does not know the answer because there is no negative marking, the students will do the, that item by guessing. When the students are guessing and they are getting marks over there, practically it is it is not good for 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 the assessment. But it does but it does happen. So if there is a, there is a question with four options. And the student does not know the answer. The probability is that he can strike with the correct answer. The probability is 0 0.24 for that, 2, 2 point, 0 0.25 for that. If the question has five options, for example, the, the probability is that he or she will be able to guess it correct 0 0.20 uh, times. So, if there are five options, one fifth of the chance is there. If there are four options, one quarter of a chance is over there. If there are three options, one, one third of the option is, is there that they will, the probability is there that, that they will get the correct answer. So the, from the ideal score, which is, which is the, the perfect score of zero, and if you add these two ones, and then you uh, divide it by two, you will get the middle level in which the students will be getting the marks for that examination. Got it? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Prof. Mohammed Aslam, your question. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Dr. Ksana, thank you very much for the lucid presentation. Uh, this is all about post hoc analysis of the item. Mm -hmm. Is per hoc, not pre hoc, but per hoc analysis possible? And if yes, how can we do per hoc analysis of the items? Uh, uh, pre, the the pretest analysis is recommended in some places, Prof, and that is done when you give this test to a group of students and uh, you analyze the, the performance of those students. Uh, or if if you have given those questions to, for example, in the in the in the formative assessment, and you can analyze those in for, in the, those answers, and then you will know whether, how the students are performing, and then you'll ask few of those questions. In the in the final examination again and see how they are performing again. Right. So that you can you can differentiate between the two. Right. And that, right. that that will that will make make us to decide uh, which which uh, questions were good one and which questions were the students don't remember and they were they were marking it just by by guessing it. Right. Right. Thank you. Thank you very much.
प्रोफेसर रशीद राशिद महमूद प्रोफेसर राशिद महमूद सर अनम्यूट योर सेल्फ प्लीज सर माय क्वेश्चन इज अबाउट डिफिकल्टी इंडेक्स we gave one question in a test uh, four tally test that was found to be difficult the same question was given in the uh, in, a, in a high stake exam later in the module examination that was found to be difficult uh, e relatively easier the same question was given in the ancestral examination that was found to be very easy so that depends upon the uh, preparation of the student also uh, i need your comments about that That, that that is that is exactly how it happens bro it is not only about the, their preparation it also how how much they remember it later on as well so if the if the students have prepared the question well the difficulty index always reflects how prepared the students are so how the difficulty does not is that question is difficult means the students are not able to answer it correctly so the difficulty index uh, Also tells about the question and also tells about the student, the batch of students which we are dealing with. Uh, You're right, uh, Prof. Uh, you know that the difficulty and easy is a relative term. If you know something, that's easy. If you do not know, that's difficult. So that is just just natural. So basically, it is uh, the the comparing the students with uh, with each other. uh probal yes uh, good afternoon sir and good afternoon ma'am once again like always it was a wonderful presentation um i can just have one question ma'am going through the, when you were talking about the minimum number of questions and the students now my the challenge i face is that we are teaching small group students in clinical years so i at one point of time i would have 10 12 students and then in a short rotation we do a, a single best type uh, question answer uh, at the end of their rotation which would be 20 questions at one time so do you think is it fair to do item analysis and would it give uh -huh. any creditable results uh, not really because 10 is is a very small number if you can take the 27% over there so there will be three students you are comparing <laughs> that that would not be an appropriate thing to do prof but uh, if you are you are conducting the exam of with the number of uh, groups then you can combine those groups and you can get the difficulty and discrimination index over there as well yeah i do that so i'm repeating but i but i can seldom repeat questions so for that particular item it becomes very difficult to put it in a to justify and put it in the question bank it it is not necessary prof that you are asking the same item if it is if, if it is examining the same content the content is same but you are your question is different still because you are you are you are you are analyzing the same uh, the knowledge or the same concept over there so you can have a uh, different question but testing the same concept that is that is what we want to know whether the student have understood the concept or not the concept uh, thank you because it's it's becoming this i mean we do repeated tests every month in and it goes on like 12 exams in a year but it's always small numbers and small number of questions we found an answer and that was that and that answer made our life easy as well rather than having this written examination at end of every posting we said it that we will do it twice a year or thrice a year so that helped us to reduce the workload of our constructing the questions and at the same time we were able to analyze this uh, the questions you may think of that option yeah thank you thank you so much sir for the suggestion right okay the next farzana farzana um, yeah assalam alaikum I am a professor in Taif Medical College in Saudi Arabia, and we are uh, regularly doing this item analysis. Mm -hmm. uh, my question is with uh, uh, Professor Ruksana. Uh, first of all, uh, congratulations! Very informative uh, your lecture. Uh, as you told that there is uh, the results cannot be changed. You said that even we'll do the item analysis, the result will be same. But what we are doing is actually uh, when the students uh, finish their papers. before giving the result we do post uh, uh, item analysis and when we see some questions 
which we are thinking that they have got a difficulty index is very very much high or the result was like uh, a was correct but then 80 percent has student has given the answer b either we make some changes and the result it can affect the results of a student so my question is how you are saying that result can result be the same we we we, we do that it, 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 it is a possibility and it should be done actually if you think that the item is is very confusing for the student, for example, and there is a lot of negative discrimination over there, we remove that question from the result and we calculate the result from the other questions. Which are, which yes. Are like to be that, that is being done. Okay. Thank uh, you very so, much. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, it's done. Thank you. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum, uh, Professor Oksana, may I ask a question? I yeah, sure, did raise sure. my hand, sure, maybe sure. you can't see. Uh, I'm Nikat Nadeem. Okay. So you were you, you, you called upon, yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, Nikat Nadeem, uh, mm -hmm. I'm Associate Professor DME, Lahore Medical Dental College. What I need to know is, number one, as we are colleges affiliated with a university and these analysis uh, of the professional exam of MCQs, do you think it is a responsibility of the university to share the pre or post or do you per se analysis of MCQs with its affiliated colleges? Number one. Number two, how much uh, effect or how much uh, of uh, value should we give to the number of options or the distractors from the correct answer in MCQ depending upon the exams, summative, formative or higher stake exam like we have MDCAT uh, how much value should be, be given to the number of distractors that you're going to have with the correct answer? Number three, number three, uh, when we are deciding about MCQ distractors from the answer, the option number or whatever, are there set criteria for it? Thank you. Okay. Uh, number of distractors, uh, uh, generally, which is commonly used is the uh, four option uh, item. Uh, in which one is correct and the three are distracted, which is common practice nowadays. Uh, in some universities, there are five items. In the latest recommendations are you can have three options. Uh, and they have found that statistically, they, the, there is no not much difference between the results, of, uh, the reliability and the validity because of the changing the four items, four, four options to three options. So, uh, you can have a mixture of all these uh, four or three options in your examination as well. That, that also will make the, the, the examination. Because if you are putting the distractors over there, which are non-functional, practically that is the wastage. If you, if you are not able to get enough distractors, you can have the three options, you can have four options, you can have five options. All are equally valid and reliable uh, for, for assessment. Uh, regarding the uh, sharing of the uh, results from one year from, from one university to another university, no, I no, no, uh, sorry to cut in with its mm -hmm. affiliated colleges. Like we are affiliated with the university, obviously they take the professional exams, mm -hmm. but uh, we don't have the analysis of the MCQs which were given in that exam. So you don't get you, is, get, you don't get it back. No, no, I think you should get it back because yeah. that so is, that is, is how right you can approve. It yes, is a right to get that. I, I, okay. I, 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 I'm sorry, it's um, uh, Nigat, no? Yes, madam. Yes, and, uh, and Dr. Nigat, uh, uh, it is. We, we can't say it is our our right to ask that, but you can you can discuss this thing with the university, and I think our university wouldn't know whether whether the significance of getting that that result back and uh, and. Uh, Improving your question, improving your students uh, on, on the performance on those questions. Exactly. Because, uh, yeah. So you, you you can you can make a request and you can make your case over there with the university that uh, the the results of different universities, uh, different colleges might not be shared with each other. But definitely, each, definitely. Each, each each school will get can get its, its own result. result. It should be given. Yes. It should yes. be given. It should be given. Yes. Because it has it has. Uh, yeah, otherwise, why, why they are analyzing it if they are not utilizing it? If exactly, that's what I meant. Because basic thing is of all analysis or evaluation judging is to improve. 
uh, the last question that I asked, any criteria standards for deciding these number of criteria? Like you see, if we uh, do something, we refer to a certain criteria, which is taken up globally or something, some mm -hmm. standards. Because MCQ, uh, the reason I'm asking is because the weightage of MCQs has become very, very um, critically important now in even high stake exams. So mm -hmm. like you have just pointed out, this is what I also think uh, we should be looking into. Why go for five, six, seven or four distractors? If we have a good MCQ, even with two distractors, it is enough. Um, because you see, it's very difficult. Uh, the answer is not that difficult. It is the distractors which are difficult to make. Exactly. Which um, th that is how I see it. Maybe there, is, there, are, there are there are a lot of papers coming out. Uh, few of them I mentioned in kindly if you could share. Yeah, sure, sure. In which, which it is recommended that uh, the three options uh, are questions are equally good than the four options or five options. Exactly. Those five options was traditionally done. Uh, now yeah, uh, times are changing. The, exactly. Yeah, yeah, the four options because you are going is, more is for online trend. assessments. Four option is the current trend, and three option is, is the future trend. Uh, so if you can catch the future earlier on, it is good. Yeah, because as you've seen with COVID-19, a lot of changes have come up, and some things which were done temporarily for online are now being incorporated um, mandatorily. So uh, in case we have to go for a time where we may have to take our, because medically uh, professional exams is difficult to take online. Everyone knows that. Maybe the weightage of MCQs could be increased uh, compared to the SEQs. Then the MCQs or EMQs would obviously have uh, gained uh, more importance, essentially more importance. So in that, uh, when you are making a pool of bank of these uh, questions, I think these three distract, uh, sorry, two distractors with an answer Total three options would be a feasible uh, option to uh, pursue. Yeah, yeah, this yeah, is the lot really of research and, research. There's a lot of exactly. research and, Dr. Dikat and, and it is being recommended. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time. Always a lightning. Thank you. Both of you. One, one point. Uh, 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 there was some discussion on moderation yes. and the use of uh, difficulty and uh, uh, discrimination index. And uh, the, in one of the answering to one of the questions, Dr. Usana had mentioned that, yes, the, based on the, uh, this uh, difficulty and discrimination index, after the examination, we can moderate the, the questions, not the results, the questions, and we can find out uh, the questions which should not be included in the final result. So that is what somebody has mentioned in the chat box. Okay, the next uh, question, Dr. Jayati. Hi, uh, yeah, thank you, ma'am, uh, for our elaborate uh, session. And we have understood uh, the complex concepts in a very simpler way. Uh, I had a little, I beg to differ when you said that a question, a multiple choice question can have just two options. According to me, uh, will the chance of passing uh, that or getting that question right by a student who just guesses, will it not increase to 50%? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, no, we, we, we were discussing three options, not two options. No, but I think sometime it was also mentioned that it is uh, not the number of distractors, but the difficulty of distractors or something. And uh, somebody, I don't know, uh, you or somebody, uh, the audience mentioned that it is also okay to have just two distractors. I beg to differ. Uh, could you explain, ma'am? Uh, no. Uh, two distractors, some of the papers do recommend that, but we are not using it. It's generally not used. But uh, according uh, to me, three, three uh, options, just, 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 three yeah. options in which one is correct as cancer and two are the distractors is commonly used now. Uh, ma'am, uh, if we go by that uh, passing by chance, by guessing, will go on reducing when we ha increase the number of distractors. Of course, the, they, 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 the, the analysis which has been done with, with, the, with this type of assessment is that the chances of guessing does not go very high. Sorry, ma'am? The, the chance of guessing does not go very high. The statistical analysis says that it doesn't make a, a big impact. Uh, but uh, at least for two, what is your take, ma'am? We should two, not two, have two, 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 no, two, two, no. This, this, that will, it will be a true, false sort of analysis. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Uh -huh. At least minimum three, you suggest, right, yes. ma'am? Yes, three, four, five. Okay, good. Yeah, thank, thank you, ma'am. Thank you.
in a lighter vein, it's from test cricket to T20 and from T20, one day to one day to T20. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely right. I think uh, if I may add, we should always go on like we have the opportunity to have analysis of these things. Right? If we have for two distractors or three distractors, which means three, five or five. Uh, four or five, I'm sorry. So I think it's the data which tells us. When we have data from different universities, I think then uh, it will help us all to come up with certain standards that yes, uh, correct answer with three distractors is a better option. It is always numbers, I think, which um, are more facilitatory rather than just saying that this is better or that. Um, evidence is better, I suppose. I'll, I'll, I may I'll be share, wrong. I may I'll, be wrong. I'll, I'll, I'll share. I'll share the uh, the articles on those. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, uh, everybody. Uh, as usual, I the last two slides. The next webinar would be on the nineteenth of December, and it is on continuous assessment and logbook. Um, uh, uh, hope to see you all again at that time. And the next one, the, our usual uh, request. Next slide. The, our usual request. So please, uh, uh, this for this contribution, uh, everybody who attended this uh, uh, session is requested to donate one USD or an equivalent amount in, in your local currency to any deserving individual in your neighborhood or in any public welfare organization. This is uh, the appeal we make at the end of uh, uh, every, every webinar and hope that we get a good response on that. With that, I thank you everybody for uh, your uh, uh, attention and uh, for our attendance. Hope to see you in next webinar, inshallah. Uh, Professor so, Alamshir, may I? Yes, I just please. wanted to add uh, that, uh, uh, I don't know if we have done on it or not, but uh, open book assessment is coming up a lot. So if you could keep that in uh, line for some yeah. webinar yeah. In, uh, in, in a context of uh, professional exams that are formative exams that we take for medical students or dental right. students. Yeah, that's Thanks, a good sir. topic. We we had some discussion on that, uh, but that uh, was just uh, some elaborative part of it. Yeah, but yeah. we may have and, an elaborate session on that. Thank you. And in a lighter vein, our bookless examination, our bookless assessment. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I think we should stop taking examinations. <laughs> Just promote yeah. them. No, you, you can have a continuous, a good continuous assessment, and yes. then you don't need to have a end of the year exam. This, this, this we, this we, at least this component we will discuss in our next webinar. Thank and you. The number much. of the number of professional examination is re reducing worldwide actually. In, in, in Malaysia, we are getting, getting away with the. First professional and second professional, it's only the final professional, which is it is a very very simple exam which will you will test only the competencies of the students. I think ma'am, you are very right because uh, still when we take annual first and second graph, uh, subjectively I would say that we are actually seeing the amount of information they can cram up, the whole book they cram up, and then they come and give exam, SCQ or MCQ. I mean, um, that just basically in a way is a sort of a rote learning. So mm -hmm. even if we, the, the EPA systems which are coming, that I think if it could be applied, could be, or then I think uh, you are kind of uh, making a tier that they have clearing the milestones and going up. You are building on it. You can always mm -hmm. keep coming back in different spirals for it. The, it's not a written law that you have. I think it's just a method which is going on for years that you have exactly. to take. There are a number exactly. of other specialities, uh, not medical, but other where they just go for uh, uh, semester systems and they keep on in uh, changing uh, their systems according to that. There's um, assessment tools, I would say. 
So I think uh, it's not necessary that you have to learn the whole year and sit for an annual exam and then only you can say that's a good doctor. Uh, I think you, you are perfectly right in that that it promotes slow learning when we are asking the students it to is. come for the in our, in our every country, few months. This is what is happening with the annuals. Even if you take uh, the other way around that we are integrative system, still you take a professional exam. So mm -hmm. still it's the same thing. You are asking them to cram up three years of surgery within two days of your exam. Hardly you get two, three days and you have three years of syllabus for surgery that or medicine for, uh, that uh, that you have to, uh, you know, kind of learn oh and sit for an SCQ <laughs> exam or MCQ. So it's rote learning. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'm sorry we took your time. Uh, thank you very much. Bye-bye, okay, everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you, Prof. Wonder, wonderful presentation. Thank you, God Professor Alam you. and yeah. Professor Malik. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum ji. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi. Thank you so much, Prof. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Prof. So, so we missed you. Yes. Uh, Prof Malik, uh, can I uh, clarify? Am I in your group or not? You Prof are Malik? always in the group. I know, also, and so, I have and not a group, missed. A group cannot be completed without you. Oh, uh, no, uh, no, Prof. Uh, please don't uh, uh, get angry. But I think I've never missed uh, 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 your sessions uh, from, uh, from the one long part. The thing I think is, you said this one you have given the PowerPoints. I went through just now to the back. I don't find it. Which, which, you said which, you put it which in the group, group are you, Prof? Is it? Which group are you? I don't know. That's why. How many groups have you? I, okay, I okay, them. okay. I'll 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 send you one. Because the other time too, I mentioned at the end of uh, such, uh, I think, uh, three back, uh, three sessions back, and I look for it. So, how many book uh, groups have you? Because now I can enter you uh, at a session, but when I'm trying to locate the PowerPoint. Because uh, when you do, I'll I'll, I'll I'll send you. I'll send thank you, you, thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Okay, bye, -bye. I really appreciate right. it, uh, Roxana. You. you are expert. You are an expert. The item analysis, I enjoy it all the time. Thank <laughs> you. Yes, I really enjoy it. Excellent. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.